praise the name of our God and King. Good afternoon, dearly beloved. All oh, praise to the holiest in the heights and in the depths be praised. The songwriter rightly says that in all his works, most wonderful and he is most sure in all his ways. There is nobody who is more sure in his words and marvelous in his works than our, our most high God, the great and awesome and beautiful and amazing Father. And so I present this good, good God to you this afternoon as we march into our series on who God whom God seeks whom God seeks and I believe that for now by now we've learned that God is seeking those whose heart are righteous or upright towards him as he rightly says in Psalm 34 that the eyes of the Lord, verse 15, are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. Uh, but our most, our, our theme scripture is Psalm 89, verses 20. Today we're going to look extended more to about 29. So it says that I have found my servant, my servant David, and with my holy oil, have I anointed him with whom my hand shall be established. My arm shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon, upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. My hand in, in my hand his horn shall be exalted. And so we looked at all that, and um, but we have, for now, in the past few weeks, we have looked at the very first verb, a verse that says that, I have found David my servant with my holy oil, I've anointed him. And regarding the anointing, we have looked at um, the benefits of the anointing, why God anoints the type of people he anoints, uh, and we, we simply put that, um, but blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Hallelujah. And so we have looked at what the anointing is and the benefits of the anointing. We are going to, for today, we're going to look at how God anoints. Because we've done who God anoints. And we've done the, the benefits of, of the anointing. And then today we're going to look at how God anoints. There are four different ways that God anoints his people. We're going to look at the Hebrew and some of the Greek translations for us to understand the various methods that God uses to anoint his people so that we'll have full understanding in the operations of the Holy Spirit. The anointing simply means the presence of the Holy Spirit the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. Because when the Holy Spirit is present, when it comes upon you, that is when he uses you to do amazing and mind-blowing things. And so that is the, the, the simplest way that we can explain what the anointing really means. But today we're going to look at the various ways that God anoints and then we can finish our series on the anointing and go into the other aspects of how or what God does with the people you know whom he seeks hallelujah amen and amen so dearly beloved um there are wonderful wonderful ways that God anoints his people and we're going to look at some of the methods 
and they desire them because every one of them speaks of the of the dimension of of the manifestations of the holy spirit that indwells us you know what his presence in that aspect of it anointing does in the life of a believer hallelujah and so the first one we're going to look at is the word dashan dashan simply means the anointing to prosper so god finds the person that he desires he's looking for and in the anointings the first one he, the first aspect of it is to prosper hallelujah and so we're going to look at um as as I'm meeting my verse in your voice, it's my faithfulness and my steph, fast loving kindness shall be with him, and in my name, and in my name shall his own be exalted, power and prosperity shall be conferred upon him. That is the amplified version. Power and prosperity shall be conferred on him, and that anoint that um, power and prosperity. Uh, and um, conferred on the person is the anointing that is called dashan. Dashan simply means dashan simply means to smear, to smear or to spread. You know, when when a parent, a mother smears cream or oil on the child. It is dashan. <laughs> when we cream ourselves, it means that we are oiling the whole body, you know, so that there, there's no dryness and there are no cracks and patches on our skin. And that is what God does. And the essence of that anointing, that dashan, to smear, or to uh, yes, to smear or to spread oil on on that person, is the anointing to prosper. And it says that. Power, great, not just power, great power and prosperity shall be upon the person. Hallelujah. God gives great power and prosperity onto the person that he he finds. That one aspect of the anointing is for God to prosper the person and and invoke his greatness, his great greatness upon that person. Dearly beloved, there is an anointing to prosper greatly on the on the person that God finds. That person with a broken and a contrite spirit. That person whose heart seeks after God. That person who loves and desires to see the glory of God on their lives. God will surely do, will prosper the person greatly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Psalm 104, verses 22, um, in the Amplified Version, it also says that you give it to them, they gather up, you open your hand, and they are filled and satisfied with good things. Hallelujah. God gives it to them, they gather it up, he opens his hand, they are filled, and he satisfies them with good things things. Hallelujah. These are all powerful and amazing ways that God prospers his people. He prospers us when he anoints us. And one of the major benefits of the anointing of God on the life of the believer is for God to prosper them greatly. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. And then finally, in the verse, in verse five of Psalm twenty-three, it says that you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed and refreshed my head with oil, and my cup overflows. So that is the essence of the anointing. He says, "You do what? You anoint and refresh my head with oil, and my cup overflows." That is all aspect of the anointing to prosper because when God sets a table before you, he's showcasing his greatness, his wealth, and his worth on your life to your enemies. Hallelujah. So dearly beloved, this is it for us. As, as, 
as we humble ourselves before God, as we seek his face daily, as we desire to love him and serve him in spirit and in truth, because he is seeking such, he will prosper you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The second aspect of the anointing, Mimshak, to smear, it means to enlarge, to smear for enlargement or expansion. God smears his oil on you and the purpose of it is to what? For It is for enlargement and expansion. Hallelujah. The Greek word there is alefo. Alefo. That is the same translation as the Memshak in the Hebrew. And the verse that we're looking at is Psalm 60 verses 1. It says, Arise from spiritual depression to a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory and the brilliance of the Lord. For your light has come and the glory and the brilliance of the Lord has risen upon you. Hallelujah. Amen. And so this anointing, this mimshak or alefo in the Greek means that it is the anointing to what? For enlargement and for expansion. That same anointing is that which God gave to Jabez in First Chronicles chapter 4 and verses 10. And the Bible says, And Jabez called on God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, and that your hand will be upon me, upon me, and that you will keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. And the Bible finishes by saying, the verse finishes by saying, And God granted him what he requested. And that word there, that anointing that God put on 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 uh, Jabez, is the anointing for enlargement and expansion, and that is the mimshak in the Hebrew and alefo in the Greek. Brothers and sisters, dearly beloved ones, the God that we serve is such a generous and a kind God. Every Every multiplication and every fruitfulness comes from him. Right in Genesis 1, 28, immediately he had formed man, Adam and Eve. What the Bible says that, and he blessed them. Hallelujah. And he said to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish and subdue. There is an expansion in it. There is enlargement in it. Because God didn't want them to just remain a couple. He wanted them to increase. He wanted the wisdom he has placed in them to multiply. He wanted the grace that he has put in them, the grace to expand their territory of of influence in every facet of their lives. And that is the goodness of God towards his people. Hallelujah. Moving on, there is another aspect of the anointing called shaman. Shaman is to make fat or to fatten. God makes fat. Uh, not all fat is bad, especially in this <laughs> in this aspect of, of uh, the anointing of God. If God says, I'm making you fat in the anointing, oh, hallelujah, that is not a bad thing to crave. That is not a bad thing to covet. That is not a bad thing to desire to have. God fattens the people that he 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 calls whose hearts are perfect towards him. Hallelujah. And we are looking at Deuteronomy 31 verses 20. It says that for when I bring them into the land which I have sworn I have sworn to their fathers a land of plenty flowing with milk and honey and and they have eaten and are satisfied and become prosperous. Hallelujah. That is 20A. God says he will bring them into a place that he has sworn to their fathers. A land of plenty flowing with milk and honey that they, and, and, and they, they have eaten and satisfied and become prosperous. So that is the anointing to, to fatten. God gives an anointing for us to what? To be satisfied and become prosperous. I, you know, I, um, there is a, a lot of um, teaching, you know, this prosperity teaching, you know. Uh, I, I, this is not what I'm talking about. 
Uh, this is not the anointing that it only comes when you give money. No, this is anointing that comes when you seek the heart of God and God recognizes you because the Bible says that his eyes are running through and fro upon the whole earth, seeking whom, whom he will prosper, seeking whom he will bless, seeking whom he will appoint for greatness, or seeking whom he will fatten up a prosperity. And so, this is not so, and you will reap. No, I'm not saying sowing and reaping is bad. No, sowing and reaping, uh, that uh, that verse was 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 given by Jesus Himself. He says, "Whatever a man sows, he will reap." And so, what you sow into people's life, you will reap a harvest. Because God says that, shaking together, running over, shall men also give to you when you when you give. That's that's not the anointing of prosperity that we're looking at today. We are looking at the anointing that God puts in the man whose heart is after God. When God finds that person, He fattens the person. And it makes that person great in prosperity. Hallelujah. A land that is flowing. A place that flows with milk and honey. And what they, they, you will eat and be satisfied and become prosperous. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, God desires. When he said, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. Just as your soul prospers. He meant every word of it. And I want us to understand that there is a grace and there is an anointing in God for all this to come to fruition in the mighty name of Jesus. In Proverbs eleven twenty five, 25, it says, A generous man is a source of blessing and shall be prosperous and enriched. And he who waters will himself be watered. Hallelujah. Reaping the generosity of what he has sown. Yes, this is all part of of what the the shaman the grace the grace of God to fatten somebody as you like I said earlier as you sow he who waters will also what be watered also yes this is the word of God for those of us who whose heart are, are, are broken broken and contrite before the God of heaven hallelujah amen and amen God is up to something amazing in the life of his children. In Proverbs 15, 30, it says, The light of the eyes rejoices the heart of others, and good news puts fat on the bones. Hallelujah. God wants to put some fat on our bones, and he will always bring us what? Good news. There will not be negative news running amok around us. Everything that we hear will, will cause us to be fattened because it will all be good news. Testimonies of God's greatness, testimonies of God's power, testimonies of God's grace, good news of healings, good news of the manifestations of the power of God, good news of being a blessing to others, good news of others being a blessing to you, good news of destiny helpers coming your way, the good news of angelic ministrations, angelic manifestations in your life, angelic deliverances, all good news that will make your bones fat. Hallelujah. The last one that we want to look at is Marizo. Marizo in the Greek is to pour. And in the Amer- uh, Aramaic is suk, to pour. Ma- mu- mu- <laughs> Marizo, M-U-R-I-Z-O in the Greek, to pour. And in Ameri- uh, Aramaic is what? Suk, to pour. And that can be found in Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to 30. It says, it shall come to pass... Afterwards, that I will pour, hallelujah, out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. The old man shall dream dreams. The young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and my maid servants, I will pour my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and on earth. Hallelujah. God wants to show his wonders Wonders in heaven on earth towards those whose hearts are perverted towards them. He wants to pour out of his spirit that he, even our sons and daughters will prophesy. The benefit doesn't just stay with us. It extends to our posterity. Hallelujah. It extends to gen- generations or, or, or even unborn. God wishes that even the people that are affiliated with us, people who serve us in church, people who work with us, people who stand with us in intercession, they all become partakers 
of the anointing that God pours, the souk, oh, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Dreaming dreams, prophetic dreams, prophesying. Oh, my land did it be katatala bosheka. And seeing visions are all part of the anointings that God pours on the person whose heart is perfect towards him. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our, our, our series on the anointing. And I need you to understand that God desires to manifest his greatness, powerful signs and wonders, manifestations of wonders. In heaven on an earth, in the life of those whose hearts are toward, are perfect towards Him, are, are, are of a broken and a contrite spirit, that is what we want. You want, we want God to do with our lives. So, dearly beloved, I thank God for this time in understanding of the various types of anointings and what the benefits of the anointing and the greatness of our God and His desire to bless those whose hearts are towards him. So let's keep seeking him. Let's keep loving him. Let's keep walking perfectly towards him. If you want to make mistakes, let's ch- let's t- let's repent quickly and allow him to mold our heart to suit his purposes and his agenda as we walk, we walk in holiness and in righteousness. Love you guys. God bless you. We'll be looking at the various different aspects of the blessings of the man that God God finds and he says, with whom my hand shall be established. So next week, we'll do that God will establish his hand in your life in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Love you guys. Shalom, shalom, shalom. God bless you.